Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, Lightroom has, has made a major upgrade to the develop module, which is what we're talking about here. And, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting. I've been thinking about this and, and back a few years ago when Adobe went from, uh, went to the subscription model where you have to pay every month or every year to stay in Lightroom and Photoshop, uh, there's a lot of grumbling. I was a grumbler. Um, but uh, it, it's turning out, at least I think so, that it's a great thing because the upgrade that they've made this time in October, they just would not have done if you bought Photoshop separate from Lightroom because it is just really infringing on a lot of the things that Photoshop does. But since we are uh, paying for Photoshop and Lightroom at the same time, they can add these things and it makes Lightroom run a lot um, more efficient and you don't have to jump to Photoshop. So tonight we're going to be talking about, uh, uh, I'm going to be showing you on Lightroom Classic, uh, the, the changes that they made to the masking capabilities also work in Adobe Camera Raw and the mobile version and the, the new version of Lightroom. But we're going to be using the Classic, which is uh, the most powerful version of Lightroom. So, so if you don't regularly use Classic, uh, the the uh, things that I'm going to be talking about work in the other ones. Just will look a little bit different. So we're going to be in the develop module. So I'm going to click on develop here, and uh, on on the right side, this is where the big changes have have occurred. So the toolbar here on the top looks completely different and, and uh, it does the same things that it did before, kinda, but they've, they've made it uh, looking a lot different. So on the left is still the crop tool. Uh, the the Band-Aid icon is now the spot removal tool. The red eye removal is still there. And then there is this circle with a dotted line around it. It's called the masking. And uh, so what masking is, is selecting parts of your photo to work on rather than, than uh, doing the whole global picture. So if I want to make, say, the sky darker in this picture, I can just edit the sky. Or if I want to make, uh, you know, some, the, the hills a little less uh, hazy, you know, or uh, try to get more detail on the side of this uh, little old church in Iceland. Uh, so I can go in and, and make local changes, which can make a huge difference to your photo. And we'll, we'll talk about that as we go through. But uh, the capabilities now to do masking uh, have greatly improved. You could do some before, uh, but now it's, it is really, uh, you really have a lot of control over the masking. So I'm just going to jump right into, uh, click on the uh, mask icon, and you see that it has uh, different ways that you can add a new mask. Uh, the two new things that are really exciting are uh, select subject and select sky. Um, so if I want to just work on the sky in this picture, the easiest way to do it is click on select sky and you'll see a new pane pop open and uh, and it's working on this picture which of course my old laptop takes a while but now it is it has selected only the sky and so within this within this uh, little uh, window are lots of different things and you can move the window around, obviously, like I'm doing. You can dock it in, in the side over here if you don't want it covering part of your photo. I'm going to leave it out just to make it a little easier for us to see what's going on. You can minimize it by clicking on this one. And so you have a, a list view. And then uh, if you need some help, there's a little help button there. Uh, close that back up. And then the show overlay uh, checkbox, which used to be down on the bottom of the picture, which is always a strange place, I thought. But uh, now they've moved it right up here to the top. And 
that is uh, really handy. So you noticed when I clicked on the select sky, it created this mask one, it's called. And then below that, it shows that it's, it's in that mask, it is using the sky filter. So as we, as we work on this, we can do lots of different things. If, we're, if we know we're going to make multiple masks and do multiple edits, we can rename this so we don't have to guess what it is. So if I double click on mask one, the name comes up and I just name that sky. So I know that that, that layer, that mask is the sky mask. And if I click on it again, you'll see it comes down here. So as part of the show overlay, right now it's selected to show it as pink. I can change the color of that by clicking on the color box and going through here and choosing whatever color I want that overlay to be. Um, I, I am, uh, like many males, challenged in seeing pinks. So I usually go for this bright green or, or something that's I know it's not going to be in the picture elsewhere. Okay, so so I I now have changed my color overlay to that green. I can also click on the three dots and choose different ways to view the overlay. So this one's a color overlay on black and white. So it turns everything that I'm not masking into black and white. So actually, I'm going to move this into the dock so it makes it easier to see the whole picture. So now we can tell that we have masked off just the sky because it's green and the rest of the picture is black and white. If I come back down to those three dots, I can do image on black and white. So that will show me the actual image, what's being masked, the actual image rather than just an overlay. So the color part, anything that's in color is part of my mask. And so anything that is masked is what I can work on locally, okay? So I can also choose uh, image on black. So I'm just seeing the image and the rest of it turn black. Uh, image on white, so everything else is white. And then uh, white on black. So whatever's white is what's being masked off. Whatever's black is not getting any masking. So I have found uh, that that changing these depending on the photo can really help me visualize what the mask is being applied to. So, um, and and I found that it it really doesn't matter which one I'm working with. Uh, it, it just just really helps all the time. So let's just go back to the standard color overlay for now. And if we want to turn off the overlay which means we're not seeing it, it is still being uh, applied, just we're turning off the view of it, we can click on that. Or this is one of the keyboard shortcuts that I've always used the most, tapping the O key on the keyboard uh, toggles off the overlay, tapping the O key again toggles it back on, uh, especially when it was uh, located down in the bottom of the picture. Uh, tapping that O key really saved a lot of, a lot of time. Um, so, uh, once we've, once we've done that, well, so if it's turned on something that's new in this part is if we make an adjustment to the exposure, it temporarily hides the, uh, overlay or any of the, any of the controls we, we have here, any, we move any control, it's going to hide the overlay. Okay, which is good because before I would turn, have it turned on and then I'd come over here and try to do something and it's like, wait, nothing's happening. Well, you had to go back and turn off the overlay. So just being able to move that overlay, uh, or just move it any slider, turning off temporarily that overlay is, is a pretty cool thing. Um, yeah, okay. So for a picture like this, you know, I'm I'm just gonna go in and, and work on the give it a little dehaze to bring that sky in darker. Um, I'm gonna lower my highlights a little bit. 
And so you'll, you'll notice that it's only working on the sky right now because that's all we've told to work on, right? So if we wanna work on some other part of the picture, let's say the church, we can come over here and click on create new mask. And we have all our options again. So this time I'm gonna click on select subject. And, and it's gonna detect the subject in your photo. And I find this, I was thinking about this this afternoon, uh, I tried it on a couple of photos that I didn't have a real strong subject in. And it told me, hey, maybe your picture isn't, <laughs> doesn't have a strong subject. Maybe there's something wrong with it. Uh, but uh, so we can see now that it has selected only the, the uh, church, which is pretty cool. So it has uh, an, an icon now for that mask that looks like a subject, it's, it's a head, I guess. Um, so we, we can tell what, what that is. So again, I can rename that mask. So I'm gonna double click on that and I'm gonna call that uh, church. Wait, I'm on the wrong one, cancel. Mask. Mask one, there we go. This one's church. You don't have to name them, but it just makes it easier to see which one you're working on. And then uh, you know, as I as I zoom in on the picture, I might see that. Let me turn my mask back on, and I might be missing something. Uh, so if I was trying to uh, also mask off the cross above it, uh, I can do that. And what what one of the really cool things about this now is you can combine. Uh, different types of masking systems into one mask. So here on the church, I can now come down and click on add. And when I click on add, I have all of my uh, available uh, mask tools right here. So just like in the previous versions, there's the brush, there's a, the linear gradient, there's the radial gradient, and then there's color range, luminance, and and uh, depth range, which we'll talk about here in a few minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the brush and I'm gonna come over here and turn my, turn my mask back on so I can see what I'm doing, turn my mask back on so I can see what I'm doing. There we go. And now I can, I can brush and something, something new is you can click on a spot hold down your shift key, click in another spot and it'll draw a line right along that. So now I've masked off, I've added that mask to the church mask. Now it's got a little sloppy here. So let me zoom in 100% here. Okay, so we can see that I've got the green coming over the edge here. Did a real nice job up here, down here, got a little sloppy. So while I have my brush tool, one way I can get rid of that is hold down the option on the Mac or control on Windows and my cursor becomes a minus sign. And now when I just drag along, I'm erasing the mask off of that area. So I'm holding down my control on Windows option on Mac. And now I have a nice clean mask going there, right? So let's zoom back out. back to fit and we have a, a great mask working there so so now i can work on that part of the picture if i want to open up the shadows a little bit get a little more detail working in there now i can see the siding i can see the roof uh, if i want to bring down the highlights a little bit whatever i want to do to it i now have i have built mask upon mask so i have the brush mask and i have the subject mask all working within that church mask so you can add and you can subtract and you can use all, you can build the mass to, to cover whatever you want to uh, select. Pretty darn cool. So uh, if I'm creating a new mass, um, I have, we talked about the select subject, select sky. The brush 
is a brush tool, which lets you just essentially paint on there what you want to mask. So if I click the brush and I want to, uh, let's say I want to do the, the, the mountains back here. So as I just drag my mouse, holding down the mouse and dragging it, I'm just painting on there whatever I want to uh, select. Now, let me zoom in again, zoom in some more. So as I'm dragging along, I have checked in my, in my mask or in my, uh, I'm sorry, in, in my uh, tool box here, auto mask. And auto mask will uh, make sure that your, uh, whatever, whatever tonal value you started clicking on, that's the one that will, uh, will be used. So you get a fine line, let me move across here. So you'll get a, a fine line of, when you have a contrasty thing like this. So it doesn't spill over into the sky. You see, it's just holding right onto the mountains because that's the color that I started with. And same thing here on the church. If I didn't have that show overlay, I'm sorry, if I didn't have the auto mask turned on as I come along the side here, let me move over a little bit more. As I come along the side here, it spills up over the edge of the mountain there, which I, don't want. So I want to make sure that I have my auto mask turned on. So again, if I want to erase that, I can just hold down my option or control key. And if I have the auto mask turned on, it will erase it tight against that mountain also. So I can see I missed a little bit there. Okay. So now I can go in, I can either turn off my mask or uh, Actually, since my window is so small here, I'm going to move that back up here so I have a little more real estate here to work with. So uh, whatever I want to do to the to that mountain range, we can dehaze that. And again, we're only working on the part of the photo that we masked off. So I can see that I didn't do a perfect job masking, but you know, we're doing this a little quick here. So. Uh, or we can just choose what we what we want to do there. Um, okay. So then, if let me jump on another photo here, so we can do have a different look here. Okay. So this is the this is the bullet shot. So uh, have my mask selected. Uh, the the linear gradient is the gradient tool. So if I want to have a, a graduated uh, mask working, the, the gradient works in the direction that you are dragging from. So in this picture, I started at the top and dragged to the bottom. And the farther apart the lines are, the more gradual the mask will appear, will work. So when I move the lines real close together, it's a pretty hard line. If I move them farther apart by clicking on one of the lines, one of the top or the bottom line, it will uh, let me adjust that. If I want to move the whole mask around, I click on the middle square, which used to be a dot, now a square, and move that around. Uh, so then that lets me, then if I want to make the sky darker, I can just darken the sky. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that's way too much, but but that's uh, okay. Let me mute. Let me mute all here. Okay, so that lets me uh, do that gradient filter. And again, if I want to uh, not do everything, I can I can combine. Uh, tools and, and erase part of it. So it's very handy. So for this photo, let me, I would not put that gradient on the top there. So if I wanna get rid of it, all I have to do is come up here to, there's, there's actually two ways I can, two things I can do. If I click on the eyeball here, 
it will hide the mask, but it's still there. If I click on the three dots, I can come down to delete and that will literally delete it. And one of my biggest disappointments is uh, in, in the old days, which was two weeks ago, when you deleted a mask, it went poof and put a little cloud on for the Mac user. Doesn't do that anymore. And I'm really upset about that. That was the best part of Lightroom was getting that poof. Um, so anyway, uh, so on a photo like this, um, uh, you know, I'm in processing this, I'm, I'm going to, uh, I, I want to have more detail in the shadows here of the trees and, and the ground. So without using a mask, I'm just going to go in and overall and just brighten this up. And as I do that, though, let me zoom in on, on our bull down here. As I do that, I pick up detail in the bull. And I really liked the silhouette of him. So uh, I, I'm, I'm going to go back in and, and fix that. So I'll come over here, click on my, on my uh, mask. And I'm going to try. And I haven't tried it on this one, so I don't know what's going to happen. Where did my mask? Here we go. Let's try select subject. Let's see what it does. Sometimes it works great. Sometimes it doesn't. So uh, they say this is all part of machine learning. And oh, look at that. Woo. So it only selected our bull. Isn't that cool? So let me zoom back out just to make sure. Come over here, fit. Oh, nope, it picked up part of the tree over here too. That's okay. So I only want to select the bull. I don't want the tree. So I'm going to click up here and I'm going to hit subtract and I'm going to get, grab the brush. And when I do subtract with the brush, I'm just removing the mask that's happening there. So now only my bull is selected, right? That's cool. Okay, so now when I turn off show overlay, let me zoom back in so we can see what we're doing with him. So what did I do before? I opened up the shadows so I can close the shadows back up and I'm only doing the bull. I'm gonna do the blacks on him too. And if I wanna make sure, sure that he's pure black, I'm gonna lower the exposure on him too. Okay, now he's looking pretty sweet. I like that look. So a photo like this, you know, as far as masking, that's all I'm doing. I'm, I'm probably going to go in and uh, punch up the vibration or the vibrance and the saturation just a touch overall. Uh, let's just punch it up just a touch, just a touch of saturation. There we go. Late in the day, so I'm pretty, pretty yellow. So I might, might be overdoing it already. But uh, that select subject is just a marvelous thing for us. So I'm really, really pretty thrilled about that. Um, so the, the other tools that are available to us still are uh, the radial gradient, which is a circle, which creates a circle as you draw, as you drag. So I clicked and dragged in the picture. And then if I click on the dot, I can move it wherever I want. If I want to make it smaller or change the, the shape, I can just grab a handle and, and move them around. So, so we can drop that on him. And then uh, one of the interesting things is in the previous versions, when you created a, a radial gradient, whatever was outside of the gradient was what was selected. Now they have changed that. And so, whatever's inside the gradient is selected. If you'd rather have the outside selected, you come over here to the right and click on invert and the mask will be on the outside. Same with uh, the other tools. They have that, that invert button is there also. So you can, you can grab only parts of it if you want. Okay. So now if I wanted to say, uh, darken everything but his face, we can do that. Okay, so 
I've just decided I don't like that mask. I'm going to delete it, but I want to darken the background here. So I'm going to create a, a new mask, but I'm going to select subject, let the computer do the work for me. And yes, I need a new faster computer. So if anybody wants to send me one, somebody said they, somebody's going to give them a free one, send it to me. Uh, but you can see that the select subject did a great job uh, selecting him. Let's see how we did on the hair, which is always the hardest part. Okay, pretty good there. He doesn't have too frizzy of the hair. So pretty nice there. Okay, great. Okay, so uh, I've selected him. Uh, there's not much I want to do to him. So I'm, I'm just going to uh, open up the shadows just a little bit on him. Do a little punch there. But now I'm going to hit that invert. And so as I show my overlay, now everything except him is has been selected. All right. So now if I just dump my exposure, I can take that background to black if I want. You know, if you really want to get crazy, there you go. Uh, you want to have a, just a little bit. So just could not do this in Lightroom before. Just, it would just be a nightmare to try to select it and do that. Uh, Photoshop, you could do a very similar thing and still can, uh, but, uh, but this really makes it crazy easy to select a subject or, or, or whatever uh, and just change a background, for instance. So that's, that's what we looked like before. That's our after. Pretty cool. So same thing here. We still have our our tool, our our uh, masking tool selected. The select subject. Watch the camera go. Marsha still gets the poof. What? So, uh, question. That's a good question. If you get a, if you do a global adjustment, does it affect the mask? Yes. <laughs> yes. But you can come back and and readjust your mask. So, um, so like I just selected the subject and it selected the car. Really nice job there um, as I zoom in. So let's change, let's change the look of it so we can see what we, how about image on black? There we go. Let's zoom in a little bit. Let's not zoom that much. Image on black. So you can see we're, we did a pretty good job of, of uh, selecting that. Okay. So let's turn off our show overlay back and see the whole thing. Uh, and then, uh, so this one say, I want to lighten the shadows here a little bit it's on the side of the car. And I think the hood's too bright, so I'm going to lower the highlights a little bit. Now, something that you always, well, you could do for a while now. Um, you can uh, change the hue of what you've selected. So changing the hue is, if you do it globally, it's going to, if you change the hue and you want to make uh, the blue orange, her blue shorts are going to go orange too. But, uh, now I'm I've selected only the car, so as I change the hue, I can go to whatever wacky color I want that car to be. So if I want it to be a whatever color that is, it's that color. I want it to be whatever that is. And uh, as as always, any of the sliders, if you double click on the name, it will zero it back out, take you back to where you started. Uh, so a, a 
question is if, uh, when selecting the subject, if you don't want the car, but you want the building instead, how can you change the mask to select the building? Well, you can do two things. Um, you could uh, invert the mask. So let's show our overlay. Let's use one where we can see the image, the color overlay. So if we inverted the mask, it's now going to show everything else. If we don't want the street and the people selected, then we've got to, we've got to use another type of masking and subtract from that mask. So I'm going to click on the subtract button underneath our mask. I didn't name this one. Let's, let's go ahead and name this one. Well, uh, yeah, we're, so we're masking off the car. OK. Um, and then, so if there's two subjects in the picture, you can't say, use this subject and not this subject. It's not that smart. It's, it's only going to go in and find one subject. So I'm going to have to go in and, and do subtract. And uh, I can do like the, the gradient filter and come up from the bottom. OK. And uh, do another one with the brush and come in on the side. So now I have selected the building. Okay. So if I come back up here, show overlay. So now as I make changes, I'm only changing the building. All right. So bring down the highlights, open up the shadows on the building. So being able to add and subtract more uh, brushes or gradients or whatever you want to use on, on your mask is a, an extremely powerful thing. So uh, let's go back to let's go back to our guy over here. So there's an icon here that shows you what kind of mask it is. So that's just a, a, a subject mask. Um, and previously, there were little dots that were hard to see. These are much easier to see, I think, and, and to tell what you have. So if you move your cursor right over whatever that little icon is, it will show you the mask if you have, uh, if you have it turned on. Uh, actually, it'll show you a mask if you don't have it turned on, too. I don't know why it wasn't showing all the time, because I didn't have it selected. That's why. So had multiple masks. So uh, if we remember, we selected, we, we did an invert here. So we sele initially selected the subject and then we inverted to select the background. What if we wanted to do both? Well, we could do that um, one of two ways. We could either create a new mask and hit select subject again, or we can uh, uh, click on the three dots and come down to duplicate mask. So when we duplicate it, it makes it uh, so. So uh, it it lets us then edit that part of the mask. So let's that one selected. So now let's uncheck the invert, and now it's selecting him. So as I make changes only to him, I must have darkened that down. So you'll notice though that as I, when I duplicate the mask, all the changes that I made on the on mask one in the copy are, are uh, have a, been applied to to mask two. Um, so when you do that duplicate, you need to go back in and see what you want to change, what was working, what wasn't. So we can change the color temp, make him a little warmer. Okay, that's way too much. Or make him cooler. That's way too much. Uh, we might want to brighten him up a little bit. I usually do that with the shadows rather than the than the uh, exposure. Brighten his highlights a little bit. So we have a, a, a copy of the mask, and and when you roll your cursor over, you see what's the mask also here in the 
in the mask panel. So it gives you a, the opportunity to, to really see what you're doing there. Let's grab this one. So this one I thought might be a real challenge for finding the subject. Of course, when I did it, it worked. We'll see how it does this time. I don't know if it changes, if it's refining results, okay. It only got the car and that's what I wanted. But as I zoom in on it, I think I'm gonna see that it didn't get the wheel there. Yeah, I got some of it. Close enough for what we're doing here. Huh? Okay, so again, if I don't like the color of that car, I can change it. There, I like that better. Actually, I would never do that, but never might be a little bit strong, but uh, pretty rare that I would do that, but you can, so why not? Um, and so if I'm uh, done, I click on done and I wanna uh, tone the whole photo. So I'll just uh, brighten those shadows a little bit to get a little more detail inside of there, bring the highlights down. And if I, I'm uh, wanting to, uh, let's add some clarity, give a little, little more punch, a little more texture, dehaze, bring that sky in a little bit more. So right now we're working on the entire photo, not, not a masked area. So as I punch up my saturation too much, there I go. The car becomes really saturated. So I can go back to my, my mask that I created for that, click on it, either here or in the control panel. And now it's active again. And so I can bring the saturation down just on the car. You know, can make it black and white if I want, but uh, because it was too saturated, so I, I wanted to just back that off a little bit. Uh, so another thing they have, come up with is, I'm clicking on the three dots to the right of the mask, is intersect mask with. Now this one's a little, little, little bit uh, funky. Um, and I had to do, frankly, a lot of research to figure out what the hell does it really do. <laughs> and uh, of, of all the stuff that they added, this is the one that's not the, is the least uh, logical. Um, but basically it lets you create another mask that works with the existing mask to either add or subtract from what you're doing. So um, say I wanted, uh, actually, let me back up. Let me zoom in on the car here because that's masked off. Let's come down a little bit here. There we go. Oh, come on computer, keep up with me. There we go. Okay, the car is moving, so it's blurry. Come on, back up. There we go. So if I click on my mask, come on computer. Keep up with me. Click on the three dots, intersect mask with, and I'm gonna use the linear gradient filter. And as I draw a gradient over the car, it will let me then just do the gradient on whatever part of the car that has already been masked off. So it's not gonna affect the rest of the picture. So I could open up the shadows there more. Um, I could darken it if I wanted to darken the bottom of the car for some reason. Come on. My computer is really grinding on me right now. So hopefully it hangs in there with me. Um, so you can see now only the car got darker, nothing around it got darker. Same thing if, again, I, I wanted to change the hue. 
I can change the hue only in that part of the gradient filter within, which is within the mask I created when I selected the subject. Wow, oh, catch up to me. See how that's working? Boy, that is ugly. I've made an ugly mess there. Okay. So that, that is a, a, just another way of uh, having multiple uh, masks put together and then uh, selecting with this one is, is selecting part of the area you have masked off already to make changes within that mask area. So that's pretty darn cool, I think. I think. Um, what's the other? Oops, sorry. Wrong set of dots there. Um, so, so here within this, you can also hide that mask. Uh, you can delete the mask or you can delete all the masks that you've created for this image. So right there within the, the three dots of that. Okay. So let me see what other photo I had cited. Let me close that panel so it makes it a little bigger to see. So in a picture like this, I'm, there's a couple of things I want to do to it. I'm too too bright on the bridge. I'm a little too bright on on the sky. I want to bring more out in the sky. This one tree is a little too bright. So I would uh, uh, make my global changes first. I would I would make it overall look the way I want it to look. So I'm going to really quickly do that. Uh, attempt a little little cold, punch my clarity, punch my texture, too much clarity and too much contrast. Uh, Dehaze is gonna make that sky pop a little bit more, not too much, a little vibrance, touch of, touch of saturation. Now I'm still way too hot there, so if I would, if I were to just lower my highlights, you can see my sky is getting darker too, which I don't really want, but now my bridge is looking right. So easiest way, hit the select subject. And welcome if you got them, there we go. Okay, so we're getting a little bit on the trees, which in this case is okay. Uh, so I'm just gonna turn that off. And now when I come in and, and maybe I'll drop my exposure just a little bit and bring my highlights down a lot. Now my bridge is looking more like it's part of nighttime, right? Uh, so my tree is still too hot. So I'm just gonna come back here and just use the I'm going to come back here and create a new mask. I'm sorry. Click on the plus sign up here, create a new mask, and I'm going to use the brush tool. And I'm going to select the tree there. Okay. That did a pretty nice job on that. And I'm going to lower the exposure on the tree. Bring it back down in with the others. Okay. So then I'm going to create a new mask again. I'm going to select sky. And it's working on it, working on it. So I, you know, me being the jerk I am, I, I tried all kinds of pictures to see where can I fool it on selecting the sky and, and had one picture that had just a little sliver of in a corner. It found it, it was pretty cool. So I, I give them kudos for that. Okay, so now I mask off only the sky, right? Here in mask three, which now I'm getting so many that I need to name them because I want to keep track of them. So that one was tree. That one was bridge. Okay, so let's go back to the sky. We'll work on that one. Uh, let's give it a little more dehaze up there in the sky. Oh, let's get crazy. Punch that saturation. 
that's what it looked like. No, but it's fun. So we're going to keep it. Uh, if you're doing night photography, if you want the stars to really come out, pump that texture up in that clarity and you'll see these stars coming out. Pretty cool. Okay, so I really over-processed this one, but I just wanted to show you what it would do. So, you know, again, I have three different masks going on in this picture. And you know, it, it's, it's what it needs. It needs, you know, that tree needed to come down, that needs to come down, and, and whatever I wanted to do in the sky there. So, so that is uh, pretty much it for the masking. It's, it's, uh, it, oh, 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 no, one, one other thing. If you want to turn off the mass and not see what they're doing, you can just click up here in the, in the very top of the, of the panel, the little on and off switch. So that's, that's your refor look with no, no mask. And that's after, and in this case, I like it better before. But uh, so you can quickly just turn on and off. Um, and uh, no, uh, I don't believe there's a limit to the number of masks you can do. I haven't seen anything. Um, anything that said that there was a limit. Uh, I know in Photoshop there's not, so I'm guessing here there's not. Um, so a, a, a good question just popped in. Can you go back and redo photos from the past? Absolutely. And if you did, if you did any masking before, it retains that masking that you did. So if you open up a photo that you did a gradient filter mask on before, it will still still be there and you can add to it though. So you can use the, the ability to either do the, do the uh, intersect mask or, or just, uh, you know, the plus or the, the, uh, add, the add or subtract to the mask if you want. So yes. Yes, so also if you have the mask selected there's the eyeball there click that that'll turn off that mask that'll hide it from visibility it is still there but you just don't see it and it doesn't apply to anything so uh, that, that turns that off yeah um, so one other one other thing that I didn't get to that I will right now is um, here in the let me scroll back up so I can create a new mask based on a couple of other things. And I, I'm just gonna go over this and glad somebody mentioned that. Let me grab a different photo. Yeah, we'll come back here and do this. So I'm gonna create a new mask and I can, I can create a mask based on color range or on luminance range. So color range is if I only wanna select, let me move this out of the way a little bit. If I only wanna select the blue of the sky, I get an eyedropper and I need to click on just one spot or drag and it'll, it will uh, look for, yeah, I got it, don't do that. It will look for that color, but it will find that color throughout the entire photo. So you have the ability to refine that here on the right. And as you drag it to the left, you get less, drag it to the more, it becomes even more uh, apparent. So. So you can just kind of bring it back. And so now it is only selected what is blue. So you notice the sky is selected the blue, but not the clouds. So if you want to darken the blue, you can, but not darken the sky. Um, and then edit just on that. Um, I'm going to turn that mask off. And I'm going to create another new mask and do it based on luminance range. So luminance range, let me move this out of the way, we'll find a mask based on the brightness of areas within the photo. So if I only want to um, mask off something that's white, as I drag it to the right, I'm only getting the light portions of the picture. That's back to full. If I wanted to do the dark parts of the picture, I can create a luminous mask uh, based on that. So now it has only selected the darker parts of the image. 
pretty cool. So again, you can combine these with the other masks. So if within a mask, so if I did a, a on this picture, I don't see it, how it relates, but um, so let's come back over to this one. If I did a, a luminance mask on the darkness here, let's do it. Okay, so, okay, let's go more. Okay, so now I'm only selecting these parts of the picture. So I could then increase my exposure there. If I wanted to try to pull out detail there, which I wouldn't, but at least that much, you know, maybe a little bit, maybe open up, just open up the shadows a little bit. That would be pretty cool too. So, uh, now within that luminance mask, if I wanted to, well, let's look back, let's show it. Are we in the sky? No, let's, let's back it off so it's doing the sky a little bit too. Okay. So now it's picking up, our mask is picking up the blues in the sky. If I don't want them to be in there, I can hit a subtract mask and with the color range, select whatever colors this is up here. Now that mask is going to go away from whatever is blue or purple. And I can do multiple ones with that too. So whatever color that cloud was. So now I've just masked off the bottom of the picture and the clouds aren't, even though they're dark, they're, uh, uh, they're, they're uh, masked off. They're, they're not masked off, so they're not going to be edited. Uh, very first mask put a vignette of sorts on the upper two corners. Why did it do that? Uh, it's because I had vignette in the picture and it just high, it just accentuated that. So I should have I could go back in and and uh, uh, take the vignette out before I started working on the mask or crop it or whatever I need to do. So something was uh, doing that. I need to subtract the car mask. No, that's not. Right, Steve, uh, because we're, we've masked off this, but since we took all the saturation out, it's not putting it back in. Um, so I, 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 there's a way to do that. In, in three minutes, I'm not going to figure it out. <laughs> OK. So that is a, a Quick overview. Any other questions? If you want to shout out questions now, that's fine. If you if you're uh, on a if you're muted and you're on a desktop, just hold down the space bar while you're talking and you're unmuted. So the depth mask. Oh, the depth mask. Yes. The reason I didn't talk about that is uh, no cameras do that. So the, so if you create a new mask, there's a depth range mask. Um, and that only works on photos that were taken with an iPhone that have the ability to shoot in portrait mode. So the portrait mode of an iPhone uh, will let you blur the background or sharpen the background and somehow it figures out. So the depth, depth range will, will work with iPhone photos that do that. Um, I don't have any. Uh, I should have tried it this afternoon. Uh, uh, I, I, I had to look that one up too because I couldn't figure it out. But that only works with certain iPhone photos that we're taking in the portrait mode, they call it. Okay. What is the advantage, if I may ask, of doing it all in Lightroom as opposed to in Photoshop, where you can always have layer mask? Speed. Is it faster? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, doesn't and, Photoshop. And you don't have to learn something? Photoshop. I mean, if you already know Photoshop and you're good and you're fast, well, then then maybe not. Um, but uh, but I, you know, I if I have this photo and all I want to do is isolate the 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 car and um, just lighten up or knock down the highlights on the car only, just hitting that subject button and doing that is a lot faster than than uh, sending it over to Photoshop 
and doing it there and then bringing it back into Lightroom and then do the other things I'm going to do to it. So um, there, there, are, there are things that still in, in Photoshop, you can do a lot better than, than with the masking here, but, but boy, this sure makes it pretty convenient. After you've done something, then I won't ask any more questions, but if after you've done something in Lightroom, can you change the opacity of what you've done or you just go in and have to change all the sliders? Yes. Well, yeah, yes. So, uh, so it depends on, the, on what kind of mask you do. So with the brush and the gradient and the radial, you have the ability to change the density. If you're just selecting subject, no, you know you don't. You're you're a hundred years you're you're a hundred percent on that. I see. So the question uh, uh, in in Photoshop you can do sky replacement. Uh, no, you can't do that in Lightroom yet. So in in Photoshop it's real simple to if you have a blown out sky to put another sky in there that has pretty blue and clouds or whatever you want. Uh, no, you can't do that yet. In, photos, in Lightroom. I don't know that you will be able to, but I, I don't know why Why not, but maybe not. I don't know, because it's combining. Uh, because part of that is is uh, layering, and there's still not the ability to do layers in Lightroom, just masking, which kind of acts like some, some kind of layering. Ready to tear into it? Did that help simplify it for you, I hope? Uh, you know, it's, it's just a matter Definitely. of... Matter of playing with it a little bit. Uh, Thanks very much. You bet. You bet. Lauren, would it work the same way in the cloud, Lightroom cloud? Yes. Some some of the things are different. Uh, the one thing that that you have to do kind of a workaround in in the cloud versions is the uh, intersect mask width. Uh, I I didn't I don't use that version of Lightroom. Uh, but I did read that you have to do a couple of workarounds. It's there, but it's not readily, it's not as handy as it is um, in, in the classic version. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks everybody. So I do have a Thank Lightroom you, class Thank coming you, up in, uh, in January. Mm -hmm. So uh, just working on the develop module. So if you wanna get deeper into this and, and just making your photos pop more, uh, join me in January. It's on the meetups and on my website. So a, a four hour Saturday afternoon, January 8th, I think that is. So uh, hope to see you then.